All right, guys, so if you guys are new to Mike Soji Academy, we do everything you guys need to know about golf instruction, whether it be golf course vlogs like this one, golf instructional videos. Again, anything you guys need to know about golf instruction, we do it here. So if you guys haven't already, hit that little red subscribe button at the bottom. You guys will be notified every time we drop a video. So welcome to part two of this course vlog. We're over at the beautiful St. Mark Golf Club in San Marcos, California. If you guys want to play the course, go ahead and use the description below and you guys will find their website. This is hole number five, shortish par four. It's right around 350 yards. Uh, wind, I believe, was into off the left here. Uh, this one was kind of a toe hook dive ball, I like to call it, where you just hit it so far off the toe and it's hooking. Doesn't stay up in the air. Not a very good swing. Not too happy with that. Anyways, left myself in an okay spot here. Uh, the lie was kind of like a flyer lie. It was sitting up in the rough, and then it was right at the front of a divot. So it was going to be really tough to get the yardage right on this one. So anyways, I've read around 104 yards, I believe, to that pin. It's a back pin. It's hard to tell where the wind was coming from here. I couldn't really tell if it was hurting or if it was just straight left or right. Um, I knew if I got it up in the air, it was definitely going to affect it. So I was trying to keep it somewhat kind of a mid-trajectory shot, even though it's kind of hard to do that when the ball's like teed up in the rough. But I was trying to do some type of mid-trajectory shot to where the wind didn't affect it too much. If anything, maybe put a little bit of a draw spin on it to kind of counteract some of those winds effect. So anyways, let's see how I do. So as you guys can see, I'm aiming pretty much, if anything, a little bit right at the pin, because I know there's plenty of green to the right, and let's see if I can hit that little mid trajectory draw. So as you guys probably heard there, the wind picked up right when I hit that thing, and it just knocked it out into the right. So I left myself a pretty long putt from 100 yards. I think I got about, I don't know, somewhere around 38 to 40 feet. Um, again, not the best wedge shot, but I didn't leave myself with the best scenario you really don't want to miss fairway on that short of a hole um, typically if I hit a really good drive on that hole I could have like a nice little 30 yard pitch shot that was pretty much what we were trying to play and again I just hit a really bad drive off the tee but putt for birdie nothing's bad yet so we got an uphill putt um, this one obviously as you can see slopes away from us once you get past the hole so again when the greens get really quick this is a tricky putt to kind of get the correct speed so again, this is kind of the first long putt that I've had all day, so I'm really trying to make sure I get the speed dialed in here. I know it's gonna go a little bit left throughout the whole putt. When it gets around the hole, it's gonna strain out a touch. It's not really gonna snap a lot. But again, this one's all about speed. So let's see how I do. So currently, as we see, this one's gonna be a little bit short. Typically how I judge speed, it depends. When I'm playing a lot, I kind of go a little bit into a, um, I, like a clock system, I guess you can call it. I basically break up my two to one ratio in terms of tempo and then I keep. Sometimes on really slow greens, I'll change speed of stroke a little bit. It gets kind of complex, but if you guys want to watch a video on how I basically judge speed with putting, Make sure to leave the comment below and we'll make it soon. We'll, it'll be a little bit more clear. So anyways, this one I thought was right edge to right center. I hit a really good putt. It kind of wobbled a little bit right on me and I didn't quite read it right as well. I probably should have played that center. Kind of a disappointing three putt there, especially after I just made a really good par on a tough hole. But anyways, we got some birdie holes coming up, so it's not the biggest a deal. Again, I'm really just trying to see where I'm at with my game right now. So I'm not overly worried about score, even though I do want to shoot a good score for you guys so we got a hundred um, typically this hole's 165 from where the blues normally play the tees were up about 12 yards so it's playing right around 153 um, it is a front pin as well so more so like 147 winds kind of helping from the right um, I'm gonna be aiming this one at that little that tree in the background that you can see that's pretty much right where I'm kind of trying to start this thing and then let the wind kind of filter it back to it uh, with these shots, all I'm really trying to focus in on is kind of the alignment stick drill and just getting release point correct. As you can see, I kind of got a little early extension there, kind of a little quick in transition, flipped at it at the bottom, and I overhooked it to the left, and I missed long and left, which is not a good miss. So right now, currently, I'm in a tough spot. Obviously, in terms of the round, I just made a silly bogey on the last hole. Now I'm facing another really tough up and down for par. Uh, this is really where you guys got to just focus on priorities. Don't get overly aggressive on this shot. Uh, so it was an okay lie. So I was trying to get like a mid trajectory landing on the upslope like I did here. And I hit my spot perfectly. I just thought it would check up more and it rolled out a lot more than I thought it was going to. 
the greens were wet, but also it was windy, so I think the greens were starting to dry out. It was hard for me to adjust just because the first felt like the first couple of greens were really, really wet. But anyways, as you can see, the sun was coming out too as well. So now we left ourselves right around 12 feet up the hill. It's a right to left putt. A lot of times I've seen players miss this putt low side when I do playing lessons with my students. So I'm keeping that in mind. I'm trying to play this one right around a half cup to a um, to a quarter cup out right. Looking over this putt again, it looks like I might be, it's hard to tell because you can't see the golf club, but it looks like I might be aiming a little bit more right than I wanted to, which is something I'm going to take notice of. And as you can see there, I started at more like a cup and a quarter, quarter of a cup out to the right, so it was way too much. I was trying to play out more like a half cup to a quarter cup. So anyways, great speed, just um, I think that was bad alignment there. Going into the next hole, it's a reachable par 5. It's 465 yards from the tips. Uh, I think the Blues were playing a little bit more up, probably like another 10 to 12. So again, that's another 450-something. Again, this one's downwind off the right. Um, really, really gettable hole. As you can see, I got trees in front of me. Um, I have the ability to hit a really high bomb ball draw. So really those trees aren't really worrying me. I took my two club links back as well. I'm trying to take a starting line pretty much at the cart path and hit like a 30 yard kind of draw shot, which I've been pulling off pretty good um, earlier in this course log, as you guys can see as well. And uh, let's see how I do. Alignment looks good there. Let's see if I can pull the shot off. Damn. As you can see, pretty good swing there. Started it right where I wanted to. It drew pretty much the perfect amount as well. Uh, not quite. I couldn't really see it down, so I don't know how it bounced, but this is where it ended up. I have about 145 yards-ish to 140 yards. Uh, it's a middle pin. This is a really tough green. It's sloped from front to back, so the front part is the highest part, and the back part is the lowest part. So it's really tough to stop it, especially coming out of the rough, and especially when it's kind of down off the left. So I'm trying to kind of hit like a, almost kind of a squeeze, like straight ball shot to, if anything, a baby draw to kind of basically counteract the wind a little bit as well as trying to kind of hit some a little bit more of a spinny shot to try to spin it on this green I mean these were the shots when I was practicing a lot and I had access to like a track man with my old coach I could really um, get these numbers dialed in but obviously I've not had a launch monitor for a while we're getting one soon though but um, I haven't been able to dial in my numbers obviously so I hit this one probably about five yards too long I landed it back fringe and it bounced over so from here, um, luckily I drew an okay lie. It was actually kind of like, it looked like it was cut like the fairway back here. So I actually had a pretty good lie. It was sitting down a touch. Didn't really bother me though. I had lob wedge here. Uh, wind was obviously into slightly. Um, I'm trying to land this pretty close to the pin and just kind of let it check. Um, I had two options. I could play the one where I landed just barely on the green and try to kind of hit a low one and run it past, run it up there. But this shot off that type of lie, I've really been trying to focus on shallowing the angle attack and using a little bit more bounce. So I wanted to try this shot out to where I landed it a little further. And I thought I played the shot pretty good. It just didn't check the way I thought to. It thought it was going to, and I kind of let the toe release a little bit too, which might have took some of that spin off. But I left myself a makeable birdie putt. I got it right around eight feet down the hill. It's a right to left breaking putt. Wind is off the left, as you can see in the trees, so that might have some effect to it. Um, Really what I'm doing here, obviously you can see I'm a little confused with this putt, how much it's going to break. It's pretty obvious it's going to go right to left. It's just kind of finding, again, all day I haven't really made a putt of this distance, so I'm really trying to figure out what speed I want to hit it and then match the line to the speed. It's something um, that when I'm playing really well, I do very, very good. But um, obviously when I get take a break off and I don't practice as much like I have been, I get a little rusty with that kind of skill set. It makes it a lot tougher to hold these putts. So let's see what I do on this one. It looks like I got this aimed out right around the right edge of the hole. All I gotta do is just keep up the speed and let's see what happens. So I hit a pretty good putt here. Um, I needed to hit that a little bit harder. I wanted to hit that probably about a cup pass. And I hit that about a half cup. Also, I could have played a little bit more break too as well. So a touch of a mystery, but again, just really not getting speed slash line dialed. So a little frustrating to walk off there with a par. Uh, currently right now, I'm three over par. Two more holes to go in. My thoughts at this point, let's go birdie birdie, obviously. We got a pretty easy par four here. It's 360, but straight into the wind. Uh, dog leg right. I'm trying to take it up at the middle to right side of the dog leg and then kind of just draw it back. Normally when it's not so windy, uh, obviously swinging a lot more confidently, I'm trying to hit that power fade. 
because it cuts off the hole quite a bit and I can have like a 20 yard shot in. But today I was kind of just trying to take my medicine, um, aiming up the middle to right side of the dog line, hoping to maybe fill up anything. And I was just trying to do my medicine, which was pretty good there. So I was over to a touch, but it ended up being in the rough, but a um, clear shot at the green, so really not that bad of a shot. This lie was kind of a funky little lie. Um, it was kind of like tight. It was like a tight lie, but in the rough, which was kind of weird. It was sitting down as well. I wanted to hit a wedge was the correct shot for this. But again, there wasn't enough green to where I thought it was gonna skid it and stop just because the last couple pitch shots that I saw weren't really stopping for me. So I was afraid if I hit wedge, I'd bounce it over the back, which was dead. So it forced me to play a shot I wasn't really too comfortable with. Uh, controlling low point with a gap wedge and trying to get a not not quite full out gap wedge, but a pretty full gap wedge. And just this one was really all about strike here. So I'll just, let's see what I do. Hit it a hair chunky, but not too bad. And luckily, I played the club I did because it landed about 20 feet short and then it rolled up to about 12 feet away, I believe. So it was a really good shot. Really happy with that. From here, um, we got another kind of downhill left or rider. Had a lot of those today for birdie slash a couple for par. As you can see, um, pretty good shot into this hole, especially with the lie that I had. You guys, um, if you ever get those really tight lies, even in the fairway or in the rough, it's more so hard in the rough because there's some grass behind it as well, and then it's kind of a tight lie. Really important, I like this. I like the longer club option. Like I would have really preferred to hit a pitching wedge and kind of flight one in there low, but again, as you guys can see, the green's from front to back, so if I land it where my golf ball landed there, with wedge, I was afraid it was gonna hard hop and then maybe roll off, or even if it got a really big hard hop, I'd have like a 15 yard pitch shot, and then it becomes really tough in the back of that green just because there's so many different types of lies you can get in the Kakuya back there, that it definitely brings in the chance for bogey, so. And then the gap wedge too, if you come up short, there's a bunker pretty far short, and then there's Kakuya grass in between that bunker. So it's kind of a dicey little shot, even though it's only 100 yards or a little bit less than that. So really happy I pulled it off. Anyways, we got right around 12 feet. I'm aiming this right around a half cup out. Pulled it a little bit too with that putt, and it didn't quite come back. Got a little defensive there. Um, I knew it was gonna break hard left or right at the end. I just, I tend to pull those, which I'd rather do than push them just because it does give me obviously a better speed if you pull it a little left, you're not gonna roll out as much as if you miss it. Anyways, we got a 340 yard par four. Tees are way up today, they're about 20, 30 yards up, so it's probably playing more like 310. Uh, I got a six iron here, I'm trying to aim it at those trees and kind of just play like a stock high draw, which is normally my shot. Got a little dumped under the plane there, hit it a little bit off the toe. Not the best contact, but luckily it was a little bit downwind. Now, this lie was another really tough one. It was kind of a tight lie, but wet lie. You can obviously see the puddles around here, so I really got to focus in on kind of shallow angle of attack and really just try to get the club head low to the ground and stay there for longer, as opposed to getting more of that steeper angle attack I would get out of the rough. Also, the wind is howling down off the left, more so it was flipping between straight off the left and down between this shot. So I was aiming this one pretty much just left of the pin. I was trying to hit like a low hook, hooded hook shot almost. And I hit a pretty good shot. It's just the wind gusted right when I hit that. And it just, as you'll see it down here in a sec, it literally cut about 30, not 30, but probably about like 15 yards with the wedge, which is just ridiculous. I mean, I hit Another thing I might need to work on, just judging wind a little bit better, maybe not trying to fight it as much. I just never like to aim a wedge 10 yards left of the pin, especially when there's a bunker to left too. That would have been probably the best alignment to hit it close, but again, I'd, I'd rather try to fight that wind, unless it's really, really gale force wind, then I might, because it's pretty windy today, but it wasn't like, it wasn't like the worst I've played in. So this was getting close to the peak point where I'd probably just start, stop fighting the wind, but today I fought it a little bit. Again, rusty guys, course management, everything is a little rusty right now. So anyways, I got, uh, what do I got here? I think I got like 28 feet, uh, left or right putt, obviously, uh, wind is obviously off the left as well, from my view, so it's um, definitely, I think the wind was gonna have a little bit of effect on this putt. 
it's definitely one where it's just outside my confidence range in holding it but I still felt like if I put a good putt on it I think I might have a chance of holding it uh, I pulled this one again pretty typical for me whenever it's a left or right putt and the wind's howling off the left as well you get a little defensive there typically and you want to close that face through impact but again not bad for speed and it was a pretty easy two putt so again guys uh, 39 is what we shot for this first nine um, we're gonna get the stats up in the Instagram video, but let's get to the outro. As you can see, that was my first statistical round. Uh, three over par, 39, not my best, obviously, but again, like I said, a little rusty. Can I get down to the scratch level handicap in under a month? Is it even possible? I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna document everything we got coming up, so stay tuned. I think you guys are gonna really enjoy this series. It's probably the most hands-on, applicable series you guys are gonna see from this channel in terms of taking your golf game from one level to the next. All right, guys, best of luck, and uh, see you guys soon.